Hi, my name is Hitesh and you are watching Metasploit Extreme on Kali Linux. Below is my web homepage where you can access much more detail about me. So with that, let us proceed again what is actually Metasploit and how it is being designed. If you have noticed my previous video, I have gone through with the complete commands how you can access the Metasploit into the backtrack version. This Metasploit is really a requirement in this particular video that how actually being this framework is being designed. This framework requires a lot more detail to be studied before just directly jumping and writing out some commands and regarding stuffs. So if we talk about in this diagram simply the this is the core part where Metasploit is being designed. It is made up of Rex, MSF Core and MSF Base. This particular is being set in a particular box and you can say this box is supported by various other things like there are some tools there are some plugins which supports this particular meat part of the code after that this meat part can be actually being accessed by various consoles like cli gui web or armitage as well and of course this the base part of the entire framework is dependent on the payloads, exploit, encoders, POST modules and auxiliaries. Now what are these terms and what are they stands for? We will get up in just a second. But before that I would really like to make sure that you understand what is this framework and how it is being designed. So this was the base architecture on which the entire part was being conducted out. So let's try out to uh, deep dive into the things. First of all there is a data in which all the files of the Metasploit are being kept. And of course, since it is an open source, all the files are in editable mode. After that, you will also find somewhere the directories like documentation. So some documentation of the framework is being kept in the mid part, but Metasploit is being so much vast and so much extendable that the entire documentation is not at all possible, but the team is doing their best to update the documentation. Then we have got external. In this external part, there is a being separate part external where all the source code and third party libraries can be kept. For example, if you design a TCP scanner or something like that, you can place your own source code into these files. Then we have got the lib or the library, whatever you say it. It is actually the meat part of the framework, entire code base and design. And all these things are just the back support of the things. So the main framework goes into the lib. Then we have got modules, the actual MSF modules, or you can say somewhat like the exploits, like Windows exploit, Linux exploits, or all being kept in the modules directory. Then we have got plugins, scripts, and tools. Plugins that can be loaded at runtime, there are lots of plugins, like you want to use some features of Nmap, or Nessus, or something like that. You can load that particular feature via the same command line interface of the Metasploit. After that, we have got scripts. Uh, let's say, for example, there is a Metapreter script. Don't worry about it. We will talk about these terms. What is Metapreter in after some upcoming videos? But make sure it is some kind of a special script that you really want to load up and add some feature into that script that you can also load up in the Metasploit. Then we have got tools. Various command line, one liner utilities are there. Like suppose you want to capture a screen for the from the victim computer, you can just load some tools for it. After that, we have got libraries. So there are main Rex libraries, which makes the Metasploit much more powerful as compared to any other framework. It can handle most of the tasks for you, like sockets, protocols, tracks transformations, and it can also have some features, like it can connect over the secure socket layer, or it can use the feature of SMB, HTTP protocols, Base64 encodings, Unicodes, and likewise. After that, in the libraries, in case you want to code your own concept, these libraries are going to be useful for that at that particular time. So I am make sure that you understand what are these libraries and how to make a use of it. Like consider these libraries as simply like in the C programming, you got printf. Now from where this printf comes on, it comes from the STDIO libraries. Likewise, these are the same. In that, we have got MSF core libraries, which is the basic API of the entire framework and defines the Metasploit framework. After that, we have got MSF, that is base library, which is also a friendly user interface and provides you most of the stuff like if you want to scan or something, this is being provided in the base library. 
and in the modules you will find exploits, payloads, encoders and knobs. Now exploit, I have already discussed what is the exploitation. Now these exploits are further being divided into the windows and the Linux, Unix or Mac and likewise. Payloads, I hope you remember the example that I have discussed in the previous video. If not, go back to that particular video and let's try to understand the payload more in that video only. So we have got payloads, encoders, of course, to get rid of the nasty antiviruses, we can use encoders. And finally, nopes. Uh, nopes actually are used to keep the payload size consistent. It doesn't allow you to extend at a beyond limit when you are encoding the particular stuff. So this was about quite a lot of theory part what we have covered in that. Now I'm going back to my Kali Linux. It's asking me for the password. I hope you remember the password from the backtrack. It's tour, T-O-O-R, tour, username is root. And let's try to open up my terminal. Okay, let me zoom it a bit. Now in that, if we'll go into the root, let's try to run out like cd slash, let me go to the slash, do a quick ls, you will find there is no pen test library in this or pen test folder. So if I do the same path cd slash pen test, it will prompt me with an error that there is no pen test directory. Now you might be asking, hey Tesh, where is actually the metasploit if there is a no pen test directory? So this was a, actually the thing which I was talking about, the complete re-engineering of the backtrack. So let's go to one more directory, cd slash opt. If you do a ls here, you will find your dear metasploit here. Let's move into the metasploit, do a quick ls here. All the files and libraries are here. Now what you are going to do, simply just you want to type msf console and it's not going to work for the very first time. So we need to do some more little things so that we can use Metasploit in a much better and efficient way. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to first of all start a server. That is very common, PostgreSQL server. And I want to start this server. And it says, okay, the server is being started. It prompts me with an okay. Now what I'm going to do, when then I'm, I'll say it's service. Metasploit start. Okay, so the Metasploit service is being started. Now I'm going to type msf console. Now this might take a couple of moments or more than that, but definitely it, it will make sure that Metasploit is going to run at your computer. After that, you can also type a command that is db underscore status. Now this command will give you the status that you are connected to the Postgres server and likewise. So this was quite a simple way to use the MSF console and I would not like to wait much more for this MSF console because it's going to consume a lots of time. So you can wait out here and can watch your MSF console being loading up. So this was all about starting your very first MSF console in the Kali and let's meet out in the next video with some more details about all this. Okay, so here is our MSF console and I can type db, db underscore status. So if I do that, quickly here is Postgres connected to MSF3. Okay, perfect everything. So let's meet in the new video and find out more about the Metasploit Extreme in Kali.